But the result of this is people get ticked off. And that is why when I see Jim Acosta complaining about the fact that he gets heckled, how can I put this to you? You know, my, my heart does something other than break. You know, this is Jim. Look at me. I'm Jim Acosta. He, he's not a reporter. He's just a little clown sitting there shouting again and again. Look at me. I'm shouting at Donald Trump. Aren't I brave? Every report is slanted. Every report is negative. You know, he, he represents, he's a perfect representative of the mainstream media news culture. And by the way, CNN is now the least trusted name in news. I think they put out a, a list of 10 uh, news sources. They were number nine. And the, the one under that was Sinclair, which is such a minor, uh, you know, it doesn't have the same kind of weight as a CNN. So nobody trusts them anymore. So he goes out and now he's complaining. He's com he got heckled at a Trump thing. They were shouting, CNN sucks. And now he's going on and he, he has the sads. So here's Jim Acosta. Honestly, it felt like we weren't in America anymore. Uh, I, I don't know how to put it uh, any more plainly than that. Uh, Americans should not be treating their fellow Americans in this way. Uh, but unfortunately, what we've seen, and this has been building for some time since the campaign, I've been, I've been talking about this as an issue since the campaign, when the president uh, during the campaign referred to us as the dishonest media, the disgusting news media, liar, scum, and thieves, and so on. And then he rolled that right into uh, the Oval Office and started calling us fake news and the enemy of the people. Uh, he is whipping these crowds up into a frenzy uh, to the point where they, they really want to come after us. And, we, you know, we have these these bike rack uh, like barriers around the press cage, as we call it, uh, to protect us essentially from people who might take things too far. It's unfortunate because and I try to calmly talk to a lot of these folks at the rally last night to say, listen, hey, you know, tell me what you want to talk about here. Why are you guys so upset with us? And they would kind of go through a list of questions. Uh, most of most of the questions were about why don't you guys report positive news about the president? And I said, hey, you know what? We do that, hey, which is a lie. They don't. But uh, but on top of that, he says to you, you know, this doesn't feel like I'm in America anymore. But you know what, Jim? It feels exactly what it's like to be in America if you don't happen to be a coastal elite. This is what people have been listening to for 50 years. You know, I was going to put together a montage of cultural attacks on typical Americans, attacks on religion, attacks on patriotism, attacks on the culture of the Midwest that have been pouring out of Hollywood and out of the news media and out of the academy for years, decades on end. But I didn't, didn't put it together because I know that when I put that stuff together, they censor me on YouTube. You know, they never do it to the Young Turks. If, if Chink Unger, or however he pronounces his name, if he uses material like that, not a thing happens. But if I do it, they do. And that's what's happening to us, Jim. So that's what's happening to this culture for 50 years. 50 years people have been hearing, you know, you stink, you're an idiot, you have no teeth, you're clinging to your Bible, you're clinging to your guns. And now you're upset that they're heckling you? I mean, like, boo, bloody who, you know, it's just, it's just amazing that these guys have no self-awareness. Not, you know, the New York Times, the New York Times just hired a new person for their editorial board. Sarah, what is her name? Jung? Sarah Jung. Okay. Yes. And they have, she has a history of racist tweets. Let me read to you. I think if I can find them, let me just read to you just a couple. I can, I can't read them the whole thing because they're so foul, but these are tweets she sent out where she says, uh, Dumb effing white people marking up the internet with their opinions like dogs pissing on a fire hydrant. She says, are white people predisposed to burn faster in the sun, thus logically only being fit to live underground like groveling goblins? Oh man, it's kind of sick how much joy I get out of being cruel to old white men. I dare, I dare you to, to get on Wikipedia and play things white people can definitely take credit for. It's really hard. Really? Really? Because, you know, they made a movie called The Day Without a Mexican because in Beverly Hills, you know, they think if there were no Mexicans, who would, how the lawn won't mow itself, you know, I mean, what how those dishes won't wash them. That's what they think in Beverly Hills. If there were no Mexicans, we'd all be, we'd be crippled. We'd be crippled to grass. We'd grow up and we'd just consume my mansion. That's the way they think. So they made a movie, The Day Without a Mexican. Let's try a day without a white man. Let's try a day without computers, without uh, cars, without all the things that white men invented, things that they can take credit for. What a, You know, if you're going to think racist, if you're going to be a racist, that's the way you have to think. I mean, I, how can you blame white people for striking back with racism when they're, when they, Struck, yes, so the New York Times stands up for her and they issue this, this statement. 
We hired Sarah Jong because of the exceptional work she has done. Her journalism and the fact that she is a young Asian woman have made her a subject of frequent online harassment. So she's the victim here. When she talks about how much she likes being cruel to white men, she's the victim. For a period of time, she responded to the harassment by imitating the rhetoric of her harassers. She regrets it, and the Times does not condone it. I mean, that's... That is nonsense. You know, in Santa Barbara, you know, they banned straws and the guy came out and he apologized because one of the councilmen made the comment. He said, we must regulate every aspect of people's lives. That's what he said. And then he said, I apologize. That was just rhetoric. It's like rhetoric, rhetoric meaning exactly what you said it should mean. You know, the Times knew about this. This is, you know, you, you compare it to Kevin Williamson. They hired Kevin Williamson. He had made some jokes about, I think, hanging women who have abortions or something like that. It was obviously a joke. They knew about it. Then they fired him. The Times knew about this, I'm sure. This is why they hired her. They hired her because this is how they feel. If you read the Times editorial page, this kind of racism is endemic to the Times. So the fact that they're not, I don't think they should fire her because she represents them. She represents them. I also don't think people should buy their paper because it's racist trash. So this, this is what they've been throwing at us all these years, and now they're getting a little bit back, a little bit of heckling back, and they're imagining immediately that the end of the time has come. Here is Chuck Todd, and, and pay attention to this, because this is the way the media works. Because they live in their own imaginations, because they don't live in America, they live in their own minds with other people who share their ideas, they can immediately go over the top because everyone around them feels the same way. Here's Chuck Todd. This kind of unfocused, visceral anger at the other side are really neutral people like folks in the press corps. It can lead to this. Look, according to today's Washington Post, President Trump has made 4,229 false or misleading claims in 558 days in office. It's an average of 7.6 a day. This is not normal. We shouldn't be in the business of just shrugging our shoulders and normalizing it. So, so he showed a car running over people. And so they, in other words, Trump is one step, him, Trump criticizing this incredibly dishonest media. I, he didn't mention how many lies the media had told in that same number of days. I don't know why he didn't bring that up just to compare them. But he, you know, immediately he's going to be killed because people are fighting back against the media that has been lying about them. And remember, it's not the lies. It's not the lies. It's the bias. Okay, they do lie. It is true they lie, and they lie with a purpose. When they say Trump has taken the statue, the bust of Martin Luther King out of the Oval Office, that has a purpose. That's not just a mistake. That, you know, even if it was a mistake, it's a mistake with a purpose. They do it on purpose. It's not the lies, though. It's the bias. It is the idea that if somebody raises the issue of abortion and says maybe, you know, you shouldn't kill your babies, that suddenly we're in the handmaid's tale. You know, that, that's the bias. The bias that if somebody, as I read from the New York Times just this week, if somebody makes a joke about Obama online, he must be a racist. That's the bias. That's what they've been selling to us for 50 years. And they, you know, Mike Barnacle is on the uh, Morning Joe, and he made a comment. He said, Trump supporters are deranged. Trump supporters are deranged. I want to show you deranged. Chris Cuomo, <laughs> there's this thing called the Q, Q Anon. Have you heard of this? It's Q Anon. Uh, it's a, supposedly a conspiracy that Robert Mueller is not actually investigating Donald Trump. He is secretly investigating Hillary Clinton and all the lefties. And in some kind of night of the long knife scenario, one day they're all going to be suddenly arrested. And this is called Q because I think the guy who tweets it, it calls himself Q. So it's called Q, hashtag QAnon. Here's Chris Cuomo. Somebody, somebody held up a sign at a Trump rally, we are Q. And Chris Cuomo decides that Trump in his speeches is secretly communicating with Q. Listen to this, talking about Trump supporters being deranged. Here's the press. He has his people at his rally that look for the number 17 as signs of truth. Q is the 17th letter in the alphabet. Not that that helps make any sense of its significance to them. And they see Trump uh, tweeting something like this. 17 angry Democrats. They take value in the number 17, a potential sign. I hope he didn't use that number for them. He hasn't always used the number 17. I <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, the guy used to just be stupid. Now he's stupid and he's out of his what was left of his mind. I mean, this is amazing. And this and they're calling us deranged. We're deranged. This is the way the way they say how could any how could they have let that go off over the airwaves? How could did nobody see that before you started talking? It had to be an it's the prompter. I mean, it's unbelievable what these guys are talking about. And, and frankly, I feel the same way about the Russian investigation. I feel about what he just said. You know, I just want to play one more clip and then I'm going to get to the Owen Benjamin interview because I want to do a little bit of an extended uh, stuff I like at the end. So I want to keep our time under control. But I just want to play the views reaction to the sads of Jim. Look at me. I'm Jim Acosta. Trump is debasing our press on a regular basis and telling people it's fake and it's um, metastasizing around the world. This year, Egypt, Vietnam, Belarus, Be Belarus, 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 Malaysia, Kakistan, and others have passed laws and fined news outlets after accusing them of spreading false information. And then you read about people who live in Canada and who live in France, etc., who are afraid that this president is so out of control and, and so on the wrong page about every single thing that he does every single day that they're afraid for them also. He is not just a menace in this country, is my point. Right. Okay. So, so is there a way, is there a way to change the narrative about the media. Well, but, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. My, my, I was just a quick comment that I heard Jim went into the audience afterwards, which they don't yeah. have video of this, and he spoke one on one mm. with the people. And I think that uh, maybe on that level, they can see a personalized. Well, they version. need to keep on doing their jobs, and that th their jobs are to report the facts. Now, of course, as I've said before, I do not mind them attacking Trump. I mind after eight years of supporting Obama, of hiding Obama's scandals, of covering up the things that Obama did. And Trump hasn't had any scandals like Obama had. Obama's scandals were real. And we've all, we've played that montage before of the press saying, oh, he was scandal free. He was, you know, he only used the IRS to shut up the opposition and use the State Department to lie about Benghazi and use the uh, Justice Department to investigate an opposing. I mean, that scandal is going on right now and they won't cover it. They act absolutely turn the other way. That's the problem here. It's the line and the bias. But what I loved about that cut is Whoopi Goldberg saying, is there any way to change the narrative? She didn't say, is there any way to change what the press does? Is, is there any, is there any, you know, are all these people just angry? Did they just wake up one morning kind of with a thorn in their butts? You know, I'm just angry. I just feel I'm just on the wrong side of the bed. And you know who I'm going to blame? Jim Acosta. That's who I'm going to blame. Or or is it decades of lies, decades of insults, decades of bias, decades of attacking American culture that has them angry? Nobody, nobody on the press is asking that question, not one single person. And that, of course, is where wisdom begins.